Hello, everyone. Uh, or hola, even. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for coming uh, to my talk about Sea of Thieves. So, for those that don't know, I'm Joni. I'm the executive producer uh, on Sea of Thieves. So, just a quick question: Who here has played Sea of Thieves? Just like raise your hand. So, good, yeah, good amount. That's that's cool. Um, and who here is like a games journalist? Are there any journalists here? No, that's good. That means I can say anything. Oh no, there are some. Okay, uh, but. Uh, and, and who's like a, a student, someone that's kind of trying to get into games development or something? So there's a mixture here, and, and uh, that's cool. So, because when I thought about putting together a, a kind of a talk about Sea of Thieves for this, I thought I wanted to do something for a, um, a mixed audience, uh, people with different perspectives, but really talking about creating a new type of multiplayer game. So that's the, that's the topic of this talk. And, with Sea of Thieves, we really wanted to do something different, and we we were really passionate about multiplayer as a as a, a kind of a vehicle for, for to deliver this game to people. But to try and do something different, to try and bring what's great about multiplayer, like really positive social connections, um, positive online experiences, and and make some decisions to kind of try and make that happen. But for anyone that knows, making a new IP, making a new multiplayer game, it's, it's difficult. And so we knew we had to have a really clear vision for what we wanted to make, and also how we wanted to bring it to players. So I'm going to take everybody here through that kind of journey of how we brought this game to life. Um, so firstly, we had a really clear vision for Sea of Thieves and what we wanted it to be. And, and, and what that began with it's this phrase, players creating stories together. So anyone that's watched any of our videos and has listened to us talk about Sea of Thieves uh, will, will have heard this phrase. But what we, what we meant by this is we really wanted to bring people together uh, into a multiplayer world, kind of put them into small groups, give them freedom um, and control over their own kind of adventures, but put them into a world that they understood uh, and that they naturally kind of knew what they wanted to do. And, and if we had lots of different groups of players within this world, we, we thought there'd be uh, room for really interesting stories, some around cooperation, uh, some around competition. And so we were really passionate about this, and we looked at games like DayZ was a really early kind of inspiration for us of this kind of sandbox game you could be put in, and really interesting stories and moments and videos came from it. But it was pretty dark, it was pretty hardcore, and we thought, what if we did something that removed those kind of rough edges and, and made it easier for more people to come in and play? And we were really passionate about how we could take this players creating stories together vision and how, how this could work in a shared pirate world. You know, we at Rare, we're in the middle of the English countryside, um, about as far away from the sea as you can possibly get. We're completely landlocked. So this is kind of our vision of what a, a pirate game is in this fantastical world inspired by all the films that we grew up with and the books and everything. Um, but we really thought that we'll take this player's creating stories together vision, put it into a pirate theme, um, and almost what you could do in, in a shared world like this would be the limit of your imagination. So I'm going to show you a video now that's actually from our original pitch. Um, so four years ago, when we came up with the idea, we, we, as part of Xbox, you kind of go through a pitching process where you pitch the game to Phil Spencer and the Xbox leadership. So we talked about the game we wanted to make, and then we were like, the team's so excited that they've put together a video talking about what they want to do uh, in Sea of Thieves. So this is from about four years ago. Lots of our development team um, having some fun. Uh, thankfully, I'm not in it. I want to explore Lost Islands. I want to visit a pirate tavern on a dark, stormy night and find a crew that's up for adventure. I want to find doubloons and pieces of eight and amass a great fortune. I want to hide out in, a, in an island cove and ambush passing crews. I want to follow a map to where X marks the spot. Ah. I want to dress as a woman and lure men to their doom. <laughs> I want to be the next pirate captain. I want to force my crew to walk the plank. I want to find a message in a bottle and rediscover old legends. I want to sail the seven seas, steal from me crew, and spend me all gotten gains. I want to paint pictures of legendary pirates. I want to be feared. I want to adventure in a fantastical world. I want to be 
the king of the sea. I'm gonna lock my enemies in the brig and sink the ship. I want to do some cooking. I want to take my revenge against my mutinous crewmates. I want to pick a point on the horizon and explore the vast sea along the way. I want to pillage some ships. I want to find treasure! I want to be the most fearsome pirate with an eye patch and a wooden leg. Arr! I want to board an enemy galleon and engage in an epic sword fight. I just want to be rescued! I want to sail the ship through fierce weather and navigate deadly whirlpools. I'll go sailing with you on the ocean blue and entertain the crew with a shanty or three. <laughs> so, just a little glimpse into the behind the scenes kind of work that we do to inspire people within the organisation to get the idea of and show what's possible uh, in, in our imaginations in a game like Sea of Thieves. And we were really passionate alongside this about creating this fun and welcoming multiplayer experience. Again, there's something really magical about multiplayer, but a lot of multiplayer is around competition. And competition, when that is the only thing that kind of drives a game, it can lead to kind of negative behavior, it can lead to toxicity. And we wanted to try and create a different type of multiplayer experience that had room for competition, but had cooperation and room for really interesting stories. And so we were super passionate about this. And I'll talk a little bit later about how this has kind of played out in our community, in our player base but we're really passionate about this from the get-go. Like we, we've, I think as a member of Xbox, with the power of Microsoft, the power of Xbox behind you, you get to take risks, you get to try different things. Um, and it's been great to be empowered to do that as, as part of Xbox. And we, we thought all of this stuff together would lead to a game that was fun to watch. You know, if you put people into this shared world where other crews were out on their own adventures, but you gave them freedom and you gave them all these great tools, that you'd, you'd see really interesting encounters by out. And we saw incredible success uh, with Sea of Thieves on Twitch, on YouTube, on Mixer. Um, and that's continued with the latest updates we've been putting out. But we were always passionate about this from the get-go. And we wanted a game that inspired a wide range of emotion uh, within players. And again, if you think about a traditional multiplayer game, and this is like the wheel of human emotions, which you can't really see up here, but you're really just going to experience anger when you die and great joy when you kill someone, and you'll just flick backwards and forwards between the two emotions. Whereas we wanted stuff where you could have room for kind of awe and, and kind of peaceful and surprise and uh, amazement. And we really wanted something that, in, that, that hit a wide range of emotions across players. Uh, and we found the fun early. So this is a shot from our original prototype of Sea of Thieves. Um, and as you can see, uh, we, we were always wanted to be a game for everyone. You can see there's male and female Tic Tac pirates there. Um, the, the second one from the left has got the, the lipstick and the, uh, the eyelashes. But this, you can kind of see in terms of the actual mechanics of the game. So for those of you that have played Sea of Thieves, the mechanics of the game were there really early on in this prototype. We built this not to be this visual kind of um, beautiful looking game. You know, all of the art here was created by our wonderful design team. Um, but it was about proving out this core gameplay experience that we were really passionate about, about getting a crew of people together, giving them quests, having them cooperate, and, and kind of seeing how that played out. And it was really important for us that we built this prototype early. We proved out the gameplay experience early. And so this is our, our phase one of the, um, the project. We, we literally had a, a single, I'll read it out here, like the phase one objective, the first thing we ever did in Sea of Thieves was a crew of players can communicate and work together to sail a ship across the sea, collaborating to avoid obstacles and overcome the challenges of changing waves and wind. And if the ship is damaged, the crew can work together to repair it. And so that was just our kind of statement for the first thing on Sea of Thieves in that prototype. Can we make that fun? Literally just sailing the ship together. It's not about having combat. It's not about adding cannons. It's about just, can we make the core thing of sailing the ship fun? And then we went through different phases. This is Andy and Shelley, who are husband and wife design team on, on Sea of Thieves. They've been there since the very start. Incredible, incredibly talented. Um, and they worked in the prototype team to, um, to, to really discover the fun of Sea of Thieves. And 
this is actually the wheel of human emotions again. And so what you've got here is a bunch of post-its that are kind of scattered around. So at the end of every play test in the prototype, we would gather around as a, as a kind of team that have been playing and just go, what stories did you have? What memories? What were the memorable moments from playing the game? And then what emotion did you feel? So you'd put it in happiness, you'd put it in fear, you'd put it in kind of um, frustration or remorse. And we always wanted to have a, like, just a wide range of emotions in every playtest. So you can see here from the smattering of all of the, um, the post-its itself that we always had a wide range of emotions. And so ultimately, we spent six months uh, as a team of around 10 people, uh, which was kind of a, a few designers and six, seven engineers, just proving that fun out. And at the end of six months, we knew we had something special. We ran a series of play tests internally at Rare. We took it across to Xbox headquarters in Redmond and got all of the leadership to play. And we knew what we, like the vision of Sea of Thieves, what we envisaged, um, this shared world game, this free-form sandbox world was, was something really compelling, but we also knew that we were playing it in the way that we had designed and we had expected. And so with a new type of game like this, it's a new multiplayer game. It's, uh, it's all about how players behave in this shared world together. We had to get real players playing it. Um, so we wanted to bring players, uh, Sea of Thieves to players in a new way. So again, from everyone that's here, who joined uh, the Sea of Thieves Insider program and played in our alpha or our beta kind of early on? So yeah, so we've got quite a few people here that, that played because we released Sea of Thieves for the first time 15 months before we actually released it to the wider audience to we actually kind of have sold the game. And like, like we put it out there with a really early version of the game because we knew we had to test it with people. and. It's a new IP, a new game, a new way of doing things. And we knew we had to build an audience, we had to build a community, and we had to get people to understand the game that we were making. So getting players involved early was super key, just to test everything that we believed um, about the game and would it work in the real world. It's a multiplayer game, we're giving freedom, like are everyone just going to be dicks to each other and kill each other all the time, or are they going to play in the way that, that we've envisaged? Really important to test this. Um, yeah, testing it behaved as expected. Were there any surprises that we had to go and change uh, or not? And I think one of the most important things for us is ensuring that we, like our vision, was also reflected in our community and our player base. And so what we've got here is, is the pirate code, which is a kind of set of guidelines and, and rules that we put together with our community about how do we want people to behave in Sea of Thieves. So our community kind of bounced this around in the forums and threw together suggestions and ideas, and we took all of that and built it into this code. And ultimately, it's, Sea of Thieves as a multiplayer game is a game for everybody. Um, you know, it's, there's no discrimination whatsoever, and if there is discrimination in Sea of Thieves, then like, we will not stand for it, right? And like, if people report to us that they've been discriminated against for any reason, like, then we, will t we have a zero tolerance approach to that. But it was, um, it was so great that our community kind of rallied around this and, and believed in the same thing that we did. Um, that you know, We wanted to make a multiplayer game that, that anyone could play, that families could play, um, and it, it was fantastic to be able to do that together as a community. And building a community mood to see while being open and transparent. Like, we've been talking and sharing information with the Sea of Thieves community for about near enough three years now, and the game's been out less than a year. But we, we really felt that if we were open and transparent about what we wanted to do with Sea of Thieves and we shared kind of the lessons and the decisions we were making, that you'd build trust, you'd build a relationship with the community, and the community will support you, because we knew, like, as much as we'd never want to, that you're going to make mistakes making a game. You're going to miscommunicate something. You're going to add something that people don't like. You're going to take something away that people liked. It, it happens. It's a live game. But we knew that if we were open, we were transparent, we were honest, that everybody would understand and recognize that. And, and it's played out throughout. And so the adventure so far, so that was all of our beliefs. That was all of what we wanted um, Sea of Thieves to be and how we wanted to bring it to players. And a lot of that stuff's risky, like, like being open and transparent, especially working for a, you know, a big organization like Xbox, a big company like Rare. Like, not many, not many big developers do this, right? In terms of a lot of the time, if something goes wrong, you'll see them kind of hunker down and hide away and not say anything. Whereas we firmly believe that 
being open, being transparent, and ultimately telling the truth about what was going on and what we were doing to fix things if they went wrong would be really important. And so th this played out, really. And so this, this was day two um, after launch. So for those of you that followed Sea of Thieves, we had an interesting launch um, in terms of we had a lot of players turn up, many more than we'd seen in any of our betas, any of our scale tests, and things broke. And you know, we were a, a multiplayer game at scale. We had incredible success on all of the streaming platforms, the video platforms. And like on that whiteboard behind me, you, you can't quite see it, but those are the top five issues that were happening. And so this was li literally day two of our game launch. We hadn't had much sleep, you can probably see from the, uh, the image there. But we had the confidence, because we'd built it up during our alphas and our betas and, and everything, to go out and just communicate and tell people what was going on. And as soon as you put a human face to a, to a company, to a game, I think people really identify with that and, um, and understand that there's a team working on something. And, and it will be the same on any game. Right? Any game that you've been playing that maybe has issues, has scale problems, has bugs, there's a team working on that. And they care deeply about what like, the problems are and they're playing. But I think if you talk about it and you're open about it and you show that, I think it really helps build that, again, that relationship and that trust. So I'd, I'd encourage any developer, any team to, to think about this when you're thinking about making a game, bringing it out. Like, put yourself out there and talk to your community and they'll listen to their feedback and they'll, they'll respect you. And now, an experience that's grown and evolved, we've, we've had four major content updates to Sea of Thieves. It's been incredible. The Shrouded Spoils update, the most recent one, has, I think, been the, the most incredible one to how it's evolved the Sea of Thieves experience. And it's been really great to see us back up there in the top 10 on Twitch and Mixer and, and really getting that kind of awareness about the game again. And a game where we've immortalized our players, because we always believed really passionately that our community and our player base like, is the most important thing for, for a game like Sea of Thieves. If you don't have a community, you don't have a player base, you don't have a game. Um, and so we looked to our community and, and their creativity and their stories and then decided how could we immortalize that in the game. So this was uh, Frosty who created a game show in Sea of Thieves called Loot and Law, where he sails around encountering people and setting them tasks and then giving them rewards. Um, and so we love this so much that we actually have given him his own set of sales, uh, the loot and law sales. So this, this, this player is the only person in the world to have these sales that we custom designed with him. Um, and I love that we can do that for our players. And then this was a character called uh, Merrick that we brought in as part of the Hungering Deep. And uh, someone who looked very similar to him took a selfie with um, uh, Merrick and was like, hey, I'm, I'm Merrick's son, Derek. And we, again, we love this image so much that it's now immortalized in game. So you've got Merrick and Derek here that's now on the beach um, where Merrick was in the Hungering Deep. And there's loads of examples of this, of how we've immortalized people in the game. And, and again, I love that we can have a, a world, this pirate adventure world that we've we're building the lore and the history with the stories of our players. And that was always a vision for us from the, from the beginning. And it's a game that appeals to a wide range of players. You know, like, I'll read some of these out, but these are just examples of, of people's messages and tweets. And in the bottom left there, you've got awesome that I was playing online with my 70-year-old pa on Sea of Thieves tonight. And so this is someone playing with their 70-year-old dad. And, we see so many stories like this of husbands and wives, of partners uh, playing together, of parents and kids. And there's, a, there's an engineer called Andy Bastable uh, who's on our team. And his parents are like, aren't big gamers at all, but they really got into Sea of Thieves. They, they brought it together. And so, both of, um, so Andy plays with his parents and with his uh, children. So there's like three generations of the same family all playing Sea of Thieves together. And both of his parents recently reached pirate legend status, which is a significant investment in time um, in Sea of Thieves. But for me, it, the fact that you can have a whole family playing together, like all enjoying the same game, um, is testament to the design decisions we made, the, the passion we had for making a new type of experience. And to see it play out in the real world is incredible. Um, and we have a positive, supportive community. I know I've seen some of you here um, from the community. And it's amazing to, to, to meet people at all the shows we go to and to see how this game has connected and affected people. But I also love. So this image is from EGX, which is a, a show in the UK, just uh, around the corner from our studio, actually. And I just love, when I look at this picture, the diverse range of people there is in there, of ages. And like, you've got families, you've got parents, you've got kids. I love in the, like, in the corner here on the, the right, those two kids. They were great. They took part in the Q&A. They asked questions as part of this panel. And 
it's a game that appeals to a wide range of people. And that was, it was a risk for us to go and make a multiplayer game that would do that, right? Um, like, a lot of people said, you can't do that. It's not going to work. People aren't going to use voice chat. Um, and we were really passionate about, like, give people, give people a reason to be good to each other. Give people a reason to be nice online. Um, and, and they will. Like, ultimately, we have faith that the human race is a, a good species um, and that you can give people the right motivation, the right reasons, and, and, they'll, and they'll be good. And, like, and we have an amazing community. And again, just the messages they have. Like on the left here, this was um, someone announcing their pregnancy as, in our community. They drew this image and announced their, their kind of pregnancy to the, um, to the community. Uh, and I just, I just love that we've got this community around us. And it makes, it makes development of the game fun and enjoyable to have such a great community. And, and ultimately, we've, we've built ourselves this incredible opportunity, right? We've had incredible success with Sea of Thieves. You know, we've got over 5 million players have played the game. And, and that keeps growing every week, every day. Like, we, we keep seeing more players. And <clears throat> it's about where can we take this? Like, how far can we take Sea of Thieves? How, you know, and with our future content plans, we have some incredible stuff lined up. And that's because we, we had a passion. We had this vision for what we were doing and what we were making. Um, and we took a lot of risks. But it, it's paid off, and it's allowed us to, to be where we are today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up here, and then I'm going to take questions from, from people if I've, if I've still got time, hopefully. But the, the, the lessons I want to share for anybody that's either looking to be making games, looking to get in the industry, or in any way can influence people that are doing that, or influence your favorite developers in this way, right? Like, have a clear vision for your game, and don't waver from it. It's really important. Like, I've never worked on a project where we had such a clear vision for what Sea of Thieves could be. And it's really easy to get like, buffeted about and kind of distracted, or people tell you you can't do this, you can't do that. Like, stay true to your vision. Have a clear vision for your game. Get your players involved early, especially if you're making something like this. You're making a multiplayer game. You're making something different. Like, get people involved early. Start building that community. Start testing that it's working uh, as you expect. Start taking feedback, because all of that is a skill and something that you're going to have to do. Be open and transparent, and I can't um, stress this enough, that it's really easy to not be. It's really easy to kind of hide away and be nervous. Like, just bring people on the journey with you. There's people that will love hearing about what you're doing. They'll love hearing about the reasoning behind things and understanding it. And, that commu and that those people will then help spread that message. They'll help spread, like, if something goes wrong, they'll, ex they'll help explain to other members of the community that, like, this is what's happened. They've told us, like, this is what it is. Or this is what the game is. This is what the vision is. If you, if you tell everyone what your game is and your vision is and you get enough people to understand it, they'll help you. They'll support you. And we wouldn't be where we are today without the community that we have around Sea of Thieves. And yeah, and ultimately, I believe if you do this, uh, good things will happen. And you know, we, we, we've seen that happen with Sea of Thieves. And, I, and I'm really proud that we've had that vision. We had that vision for the game. We had that vision for how we would bring it to players. Um, and ultimately, the results are kind of there to see. And we're only nine months into this journey with, with Sea of Thieves. And it really feels like this is just the start. Like our future plans are incredibly exciting. You know, we've allowed, we, we've grown our team post-launch because of the success that we had at launch, and you know, we've had the arena that we that we've talked about so far. Like that's a new kind of competitive way to play a sea, sea of Thieves. But we've also got a, a really a, a large team working on on new things to bring into the adventure world of Sea of Thieves, the game that everybody is already loving. Um, so yeah, it's, I think I just can't stress enough. Really, it's about stick to your vision. Get people involved early, build a community, be open, transparent, and, and tell the truth. Like, just, just tell people what you're doing, explain it, and, um, and people will come on that journey with you, they'll, and they'll love you for it. So, it's probably enough waffling from me, but I would like, well, first of all, before, before we take questions, this is the team at Rare, and I'm, I'm here, and I'm lucky enough um, to represent the work of, of the team at Rare. This was our uh, team photo we took as the kind of project shipped. Some of the people were absent, they were on holiday, or they were sick, so we photoshopped them all in, and you can probably see them all. Dave in the middle isn't actually that big in real life, but he's not far off. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm lucky enough to be able to represent Sea of Thieves, represent the, the studio and the team, but these are the guys that made the game, and these are the guys that made the experience that, that people love playing. So, let's, let's, can we give a round of applause to the team at Rare, and then we'll do questions. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah. So yeah, so questions, anyone? Yeah, do we have a microphone? Cool. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, how difficult is it uh, for a company or for a video game to find that sweet spot between uh, making everyone in the, f in the family be able to play a game? So uh, the question is, how do you find the sweet spot between allowing everybody in the family to, to play the game? Yeah. yeah. So with a lot of trial and error and, and hard work, I think, it's, we definitely we made decisions around things like the progression system. Um, for Sea of Thieves, so that anybody could join at any point. And so that's why there's no power progression uh, in Sea of Thieves, which isn't for everybody. Like, some people love power progression, but we really made a conscious decision that you, you shouldn't have to be there at launch for Sea of Thieves to be able to come in and enjoy it. And actually, the fact that if you're kind of a higher-ranked pirate in Sea of Thieves, you can put your quests down and new players can play and progress quicker, like, that was all very conscious. It was almost like we wanted people to power level their friends and, and, and everything. And, and so taking away that barrier to entry was really important. That's just like one example of, of, of how we've done that. But, and I think the design around how the ships work and how everything kind of makes sense, which is like, most people, even when you're a kid, will probably be able to will learn about ships and learn about anchors and learn about, you need to raise an anchor and then, oh, there's wind, maybe, if, what if we drop the sails? Oh, we're moving, cool, and there's a wheel, I can do that. And I think all of those things are natural and tactile, and so anybody, whether they're a gamer or not, will be able to understand that. So um, I think a lot of decisions we made like that have contributed to, to this. But I think also the fact that I don't know, if you just watch it, if you're watching someone play, it looks fun. It looks like a world you want to go and explore in and adventure in. And I think we've seen that a lot where people's kids have watched their parents play or someone's parents has watched them play and go, oh, this looks really interesting. Like, I want to go into that world. So there's a lot of reasons I think have contributed to that. But, and also just that the community is great. Like, like, you can go into this and I think feel safe that you're, like, you're unlikely to have a negative and toxic experience. So I think having that really great community helps so much too. So, yeah. Cool. Question, yes. Uh. Hello. Uh, what do you think that is the most important task that you have as producer in, in your team? So what do you think the most important task? Yes, uh, in your team as producer. Uh, I can't quite hear, sorry. The, the most important task as a? As producer on your team. As producer? Yes, <laughs> Okay, sorry. right, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Okay, so, I th yeah. So the most important task is producer. Cool, that is a tough one. Um, I'm gonna have to think of something that I do now. Uh, but I think maintaining the vision and, and informing people of our goals and in exciting people about what we're doing and, and helping kind of information and objectives and everything be shared across the team is one of the most important things for me. Um, you know, there's a, there's a whole team that goes and implements all of the key features and the key work and, or is part of our customer service team or our community team. There's so much that supports this, but the, the key thing for me is, is having that team and setting them off in the right direction and reminding them of the opportunity that we have and the, uh, the ambition that we have and the chance of being, uh, like of creating something new and different. And I'm always... I, I, my personality, I guess, is about um, we've got the chance to do something really different. We've got the chance to change the world. You've got a chance to change people's lives. It's like, what's the opportunity and how can we seize it? And push the kind of risks out of the way. Of course, there will be risks. There will be difficulty. There will be challenge. But like, that's okay. We'll support you. And it's, and it's okay to take risks. And you can... Take a risk and, and not succeed, but that's okay because you'll, you'll have learned something. And we'll have tried something and we'll have learned and we can you know, make better decisions moving forward. So not succeeding with something isn't failing because you've learned and you've, you've done anything else. So it's, I think, yeah, giving people that clear vision um, and that, that opportunity to take a risk uh, and, and do stuff different and know that we're here to support you. I think like for me, that's the most important for me as, as a leader. Um, and because I wanna, 
I, I want to do different things. I want to do unique things. I want to take risks. I want to, like, I want to change the world. I want to change people's lives with, with video games, which I think we have an incredible opportunity to do and with, with what we do, right? And to see the friendships and relationships and everything that have formed around a game like Sea of Thieves is incredible to us. And so, yeah, so just kind of continually reminding people of that opportunity, I think, is one of the most important things as a, as a leader, as a producer. Yeah. Okay. One more? Or no? One more. One, one more question, and then, we, and then we're done. So I think, uh, sir, we'll just get you the microphone. But. Hi, thank you, for the, thank you for the talk. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, how did uh, the project evolve during the production? Uh, what did you start from, and how did it change? OK, so how did the product evolve during production? What did we start from? What did we change? So, well, f first of all, we built our prototype in Unity. Um, so that was the engine we used for the prototype I showed a couple of images for, because we wanted the, the tool that was quickest for us to build something in and, and prove out that experience. But once we had that core experience, like, it's kind of remained pretty similar throughout. And I think probably the thing that's changed the most is our roadmap. And like, like when we launched the game for Sea of Thieves, like we, we had a, you know, a vision for what it was, a vision of what would come. But at that, at that moment in time where we actually launched the game for real, the feedback around it changed the future of Sea of Thieves so much. And like, yeah, we ran alphas, and we were playing it with, with players in our community for 15 months prior to launch. But that moment when you get real paying players in for the first time, you suddenly get a completely different level of kind of feedback and what people want, what they want to see. So that was probably the biggest change moment for us throughout the whole project was like, we've got all this feedback. Like people love Sea of Thieves. They want more and they want more in all these different areas. OK, how do we prioritize that? How do we communicate it? How do we adjust the plans for the team, the structure of the team, the change of the team. And we kind of did all that in a two-week period after launch. And it was pretty hectic and pretty crazy. But um, that was probably the, where the most change happened. So, but the core of what Sea of Thieves is has always remained the same. Like a crew of friends going on an adventure in a pirate world, like having, a, like, you know, having these amazing shared stories. Every adventure is different, that the world's emergent. All of that stuff has always been at the core of the game. And it's really about how we've learned to grow and evolve it with our community has been where the biggest change has happened, for sure. So yeah. So I think I'm out of time, so I think I'm going to have to end. But thanks very much for attending. I'll be around for a bit, but thank you, everyone.